What is wrong with the way that bilingual education works presently? Well, I come from a scientific background. There are many ideas that work in theory, but they don't work in practice. There's no evidence that on any large scale anywhere in the United States, bilingual education programs really have worked. We've been trying these programs for 25 years here in California, and there's no evidence that they have had any positive effect. Only 5 or 6 percent of the children each year who don't know English learn English at the end of that year. Uh, first of all, I'd also like to say that our initiative shouldn't be classified as totally eliminating bilingual education. Those parents who want to continue their children in a bilingual education program and feel strongly about it could get a waiver to keep their children in a bilingual program. But we think most of the indications are very few immigrant parents really want bilingual education because it doesn't work. But that waiver would only be granted after parents are made to cross many hurdles. And one of those hurdles, there are three characteristics to this. One, the parent has to, to um, petition the school. They have to go to the school. They have to get the superintendent to agree to this. Um, the child has to be 10 years or older to understand and to, to be able to be placed in such a program or have special needs. But Sylvia, again, if I, before we get into the minutia of the initiative, I'd like to, to do with sort of the global issue. The numbers from four different studies that I have seen are overwhelming. More than 80 percent of parents of children who do not master English are counted as wanting them in English only or English immersion programs. How do you quarrel with numbers that overwhelming from that many sources? I quarrel with them because it's the way the question was asked. The question was asked whether they wanted their children to learn English. And as I said at the outset, of course they do. But when the question is then broken down and they're asked whether they believe there should be some primary education taught primary language um, taught to these children, then the parents, 57 percent of them, will say yes, they do want the child to have some primary instruction in their native language. Mr. Owens, I have a question for you. Why would you opt for the initiative process? Something as complicated and as potentially uh, contentious as bilingual education, why not allow those who are educators and professionals in this field to provide some sort of an alternative to the current bilingual education program and let those who are experts handle this. Why go to an initiative process that opens it up for such politicization and polarization as this particular issue? You raise a very valid point. One issue is basically the experts right now are the ones who designed the current system. And I, I think the evidence is that they're wrong, but in many cases they're unwilling to admit their mistake. Changing the law would require action by the state legislature. The existing governing law of bilingual education actually expired 10 years ago. There's no law governing this right now in the books. And for 10 years, the state legislature has been deadlocked. Every year, a number of new laws are produced or proposed to cover bilingual education. Every year, they're defeated. And 10 years is long enough to wait that without any change taking place. I think an initiative is the only way to break the get great gridlock and allow the voices of ordinary people to be heard on this issue. Yet throwing out an entire system is not the way that we believe the change should be made. Retooling the system, yes. For instance, we agree that there should be changes to the assessment of these students to find out how they really are doing. There should be changes into providing more trained teachers, more materials. But throwing out the system is not the answer. And this initiative will, in fact, create a lot of polarization. And in fact, um, it, the idea of bilingual education, the fact that these children need to learn and to receive an equal education opportunity is going to get lost. But do you think it works? Do you really think it works? We believe it does. Mr. Ons has mentioned several statistics. The 95% statistic is thrown about um, quite readily. But in fact, we need to understand that statistic, that only 30.2% of the children that are limited English proficient in California are actually receiving primary um, language instruction in their native language. But in Los Angeles last year, Ms. Arget, we had the Ninth Street School uh, demonstration by parents, uh, predominantly Latino or Americans of Latino descent, saying, absolutely not, I don't want my kids in this broken down, shambled program. Were they just confused as to how effective the program was? No. There will always be certain areas that are not performing well. And it's unfortunate that the LA Unified School District was not able to properly respond to these parents' needs and to their um, assessment that they wanted a change in the program. That is one anecdote. And because of what happened at Ninth Street School, yes, there should be changes in the way bilingual instruction is provided to, all, to the children that need it. It should not be thrown out. What's unfortunate is that those parents are now being used in a debate 
about whether how we teach our children and those parents should have a say. Mr. Unz's initiative takes away a lot of the say that parents will have. Mr. Unz, I wanted to ask you about, again, sort of going back to the message that the initiative uh, sends at a time like this in California's history. And there are those who would argue that, in fact, rather than moving away from bilingual education, we should improve it, we should make it work in its best way, and that there are certain concepts of dual immersion, where not only should English speakers be learning Spanish and vice versa Spanish speakers learning English, that the global economy requires multilingualism right now. Doesn't this initiative, in fact, take us away from what is a worldwide trend towards global integration? I wouldn't say that at all. I think it's very important that people learn other languages, Chinese, Spanish, Japanese, Russian, languages that are needed today in worldwide commerce. On the other hand, English today is the international language, the language for science, technology, and business. And the most important thing the schools have to do is ensure that all children in public school learn English. And unfortunately, the current system just doesn't achieve that. The fact that only a fraction of the children are in bilingual education is a sign that the system can't be made to work, since right now the system mandates it, but simply is unworkable in a state as large as California. Quick closing comment, Sylvia Arget. I think we, when we talk about bilingual education, we need to look at it in a full scope and not limit it just to primary language acquisition or English only. That's too simplistic a manner of looking at this debate. We have to look at the entire scope of what bilingual education is and not simplify it the way it has been. Thank you, Sylvia Argueta from MALDEF, Ron Unz from English for the Children for joining us today.